All right. Uh, welcome to this uh, uh, session on uh, continuing session on nomenclature of uh, organic compounds for uh, engineering students. Today we're going to be looking at uh, two functional groups, which are going to be calling by the names you know, alcohols. You heard about alcohols, yeah. Uh, probably because of the infamous or the famous uh, alcohol or two alcohols that that you've uh, had the famous one called ethanol and uh, and the one which uh, is responsible for for making uh, uh, people who take contaminated uh, alcohol blind or, or dying is called methanol you've heard about it yeah so there are those uh, two alcohols which are famous and therefore you've heard about alcohols before. And then we'll also uh, talk about uh, this other functional group, ethers, yeah? We're going to be hearing something about it. Now the reason why I'm putting these things uh, side by side is that they are all related. And they're related to, uh, to this structure, which I think you know. It is water. I've just drawn it horizontally but uh, what I want to do is to show you that that water is actually tetrahedral. Now, take these two balls as uh, th these two stamps as they are they are appearing as as lone pairs. So, so if it is one side here, then um, then uh, water is actually tetrahedral. So the bond angles are are one of four point five because these two lone pairs uh, because they are containing. Uh, they are containing uh, lone pairs. They are actually pushing these these bonds down. So the bond angle is is away from uh, is is less than the ideal one, 9.5 for for uh, for methane. So the bond angles here are are 109.5. Uh, no, 104.5. Yeah, yeah. So so these two structures, uh, the alcohols and the ethers, they are related to to this structure of of water. Yeah. Though here I've just shown it straight, but you know it exists uh, uh, in this form. So for for an alcohol, you've got a case whereby take take the red uh, ball as hydrogen, no, as oxygen, and then the white balls as as hydrogen. So for the alcohol, you've got one of these uh, hydrogens. It's been replaced with with a methyl group. Just to give an example of, aha, uh -huh. okay. So you've seen, uh, so you've seen the difference, yeah, in which the OH is the same, and then in, uh, and then in this other case, the the hydrogen has been replaced with with an alkyl group. In this case, it's got one uh, one carbon and three hydrogen. So this is CH3, yeah, yeah. So in this case, the oxygen remains the same. The uh, in this other case, the hydrogen is is still there. So in the case of the ethers, which you're going to see, is that the second the second hydrogen has been uh, replaced with with, uh, with another um, metal group uh, or an alkyl group, as, as it's called. Yeah, can you see the oxygen is still there, and then this you've got a carbon with uh, with hydrogens, you've got a carbon with hydrogens. Yeah. So you've seen how they are related to to water, and also. This is the alcohol. So the alcohol has got uh, one alkyl group. The the OH, one of the oxygen hydrogen remains the same. But in the case of the ether, the second hydrogen has been removed and has been replaced with with a with an alkyl group. Yeah, that's the only difference. So let us now proceed on from there. Okay, good. Um, so, so we've seen that the alcohols and the ethers, the structure as is uh, is tetrahedral, and and the bond angles we said are they are at 104.5 because it's got uh, 104.5 degrees because the two lone pairs they are pushing those uh, bond angles closer to one another than than in the ideal uh, methane structure. So let us look at how we name. Uh, alcohols using the IUPAC nomenclature. We'll come to the to the ethers later. Now um, there is this uh, 
um, form of the naming in which alcohols they are they are uh, they are given the the general uh, naming as alkanos alk alk you know now it's this is a what this is an alkyl group which uh, which dictates the which is indicated by the number of uh, carbon atoms if it is one carbon atom then you know it is meth if it is two carbon it and the rest yeah and then all alcohols as far as the impact nomenclature is concerned are going to end with a n o l yeah a n o l so the thing is uh, uh, so this is the naming if you have one carbon atom and then i i highlight this this is uh, in red you can see this one is being repeated the one which i'm highlighting a n o l so so just going to add uh, meth eth prop but and then you get the name of of the alcohol so this is four carbon atoms three carbon atoms two carbon atom one carbon atom now in this case i'm just trying to show here this are one two three is a uh, is an alcohol containing three carbon atoms yeah uh, now um the rules uh for the naming uh dictate that that the where there is the alcohol group the the oh by the way i've not indicated so this is called the alcohol group yeah group yeah uh which is the oh you must be able to do what you must be able to give it the lowest numbering yeah the side containing the, the the alcohol must be given the the priority and i just try to give here a structure here yeah a structure here like this one so so this tells you that um uh, that in a structure like this one you need to can you see here there is there is a chain here there's another chain here so here there is the alcohol group yeah there's the oh group so you need to look at the longest carbon chain containing the most important functional group, which in this case is the OH. So I'm going to start from here, one, two, because that's the end of the chain. So one, two, maybe if I move like this one, that's a small chain, one, two, three, four, that's a small chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, aha. Uh -huh. Now you know, the longest carbon chain is this one here. Can you see the longest carbon chain is not horizontal? Uh, in this case, it's running what? top bottom yeah like that one so the longest carbon chain is one two three four five six yeah so so it being six carbon atoms so this structure will be so so the parent chain it will tell you that this will be a what it will be a hexanol hex for six carbon atoms and then a n o l for the alcohol and then uh, to give you the lowest numbering, I'm going to start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this tells me at carbon number two, there is a methyl group and there's also a methyl group. So there is a methyl group on carbon number two and ethyl group on carbon number two. Yeah? So there is an ethyl group. So in naming this, the, the naming of this compound it will be, it will be two, uh, the alphabet E comes first, 2 ethyl uh, dash 2 methyl. And then you indicate the alcohol group, the OH, is on carbon number what? Because the OH can be on, uh, on another group, even though you are going to indicate, uh, indicate that, uh, that chain. Uh, so in this case, you're going to indicate that. Uh, you're going to look for the longest chain. So in this case, uh, the OH group is on carbon number number one. What I'm saying is that the OH group can be on, on any carbon. For example, if I've got CH3, and then I've got C, and then I put an OH, and then I put a CH2, CH3, and then I put a H here. So in this case, the OH, the OH is on carbon number two. 
So this will be a, the longest carbon chain. So to give it a lowest, it will be this will be a, a brief term to all. So it means that the OH group is on carbon number number two. The OH group is on carbon number two. Can you see that? So in this case, the OH group is on carbon number one. So this will be hexane, and then I put a two, no, hexane one. Or, yeah? So the OH is on carbon number one. So the name which will be two ethyl, two methyl, hexane, one or have you seen that two ethyl e if for the ethyl comes first then the meter they're both on carbon number two if if they're on different uh atoms then you're going to indicate on those uh for example if the meter was on carbon number three you're going to indicate a three yeah but but they're all on carbon number two two ethyl two methyl and then it is a hexane the oh is on carbon number one Right, so that's how you name alcohol. So you can look at other examples, but later we'll look at more, more and more of those examples. So let us look at uh, ethers. Um, want to see how we can name ethers? Yeah. Now there, are, there are two ways of uh, of of naming, and uh, ethers, and uh, and the one which we learned a short while ago that is. Uh, alkyl halides they they have uh, two ways of naming one for the simple ethers the way simple alkyl halides are named and that is the uh, functional class nomenclature yeah but uh, the more common one is this one called the substitutive nomenclature Do you remember how we got like the naming for the alkyl halides for most common one we are using the substitutive in which we are saying the the alkyl halide, the halogen was a substituent on an alkene. In this case, we have here whereby the ether group with, uh, is going to be said to be a substituent on, a, on an alkene. But there are ways in which you can have like the functional class in which in which uh, you have uh, you have uh, you have uh, al alkyl groups they are attached to something which you call an ether. So in this case, this is the functional class in which I'm going to say, hey, that compound is, is an ether. In this case, uh, I've said that, um, uh, can, can you see here? There's an ethyl group, the ethyl group, so you've got two ethyl groups, so it's called the ethyl, and then the functional group is, is an ether. Can you see that? Two ethyl groups, so it's called di ethyl. But once again, this functional class nomenclature is suitable for simple, uh, ethers. If it is simple ethers like dimethyl ether, it means you could got a metal group, a metal group, and then an O for the for the uh, for the ether group. Yeah. So in this case, uh, uh, it will be called the the alkyl ether if if it's just a simple uh, ether. But for most of the situations, the, the IUPAC nomenclature uses the Substitutive uh, nomenclature. Substitutive nomenclature. What is that word? word? Substitutive uh, uh, nomenclature. So this is called uh, fun functional functional class functional class nomenclature, isn't it? That's the functional class. In this case, it belongs to the functional group of the ether. But in this case of the substitutive, you say it. What group here? It is, it is a metal group. Now, for IUPAC nomenclature says, uh, do you remember, there is, if you've got an OH group, this one is normally called, oh, let me put the word OH, yeah? It's called hydroxy. Let's, let's say something like a hydroxy ion. So, if I'm going to put, if I'm going to add a, uh, something like a metal group, that one will be called methoxy, just similar to, to an OH. So in this case, you say, hey, uh, I look at uh, I look at the group which contains the least number of, of carbon atoms, and then I add the word oxy to it. In case both of them have got uh, the same number of carbon atoms, like in this case of, of the metal and, and the methyl, 
You simply take one of the methyl group and then say, hey, that's a meth for the one carbon atom, and then I add the word oxy. So this becomes methoxy. And then you say that one is attached to a methane. Yeah? Yeah? It means that you, you had a methane and then the methoxy group, meth, and then oxy, makes, making it methoxy, is attached to, to a methane. Now in this second clear, uh, case you see, hey, so this is your ether group, yeah? And then here I've got one carbon atom, here I've got two carbon atoms. So in this case you say the longest carbon chain has got two carbon atoms. So the functional group is ethane. So I'm saying I've got a, a meth and then an oxy becoming methoxy, it is attached to a methane. So the name it will be methoxy methane. Are you seeing that? Methoxy methoxy ethane. Now, like this one whereby the, the two groups are going to be the same, you are going to say this is eth, I'm going to add oxy to make it ethoxy, and then the, the other side is, is now what's making the, the, the functional group which is the ethane. So it becomes ethoxy ethane. Once again, I just want to say, the IUPAC uh, adopts the substitutive nomenclature as opposed to the functional class. Functional class is what was there earlier, like uh, when you're dealing with just simple ethers. But because of uh, industrialization, we've had more and more complicated ethers and, uh, uh, and, uh, and as we saw, like the one for the alkyl halide. So, so they are using uh, substitutive nomenclature as opposed to the functional class, yeah? All right? So that's the much I'll talk about uh, the naming of, of alcohols and also ethers. But later, once you are through with, with all the naming of the functional group, like now we've looked at alcohols and we've looked at ethers, we look at aldehydes and uh, aldehydes and the other one called ketones, we look at uh, amines and then carboxylic acid. Once you are through with up to carboxylic acid, the four remaining uh, functional groups, then we'll see, hey, what if you've got a structure, an organic molecule, it has more than one functional group. We'll try to see how we can be able to, to, to name uh, an organic molecule with, with different functional groups. It may appear complicated, but there are a set of rules which I'm going to give. Uh, and those rules say that you need to identify which is the most important functional group. And once you take the most important functional group, then all the other functional groups will be taken as substituents on that. Uh, most important functional group, but that one I'm going to come to it later. So I really hope you've uh, you've enjoyed and uh, and uh, you've really enjoyed this section on naming the alcohols and the ethers which are related to the molecule water. Yeah, very simple, and I believe it is is quite informative. So I'll just uh, be a bit uh, away from there so that. Maybe you can be able to, to zoom in on the screen and be able to see everything that I've put on the board before I, I delete. I believe everything is quite clear. I believe uh, uh, the screen is quite clear on that. And um, uh, we'll meet in a short while to talk about the, uh, the next two functional groups, that is the aldehyde and the, and the ketone. Thank you very much. Yeah? Okay? Okay. We'll see you later.